All right, welcome to another episode of the Startup Sack Podcast, where we do interviews with Sacramento startup founders and innovators. Today, I'm at the offices of Stoll Reeves in downtown Sacramento, and with me is one of the winners of last year's Sacramento Region Innovation Awards, Rob White, Chief Strategist at Sierra Energy. Welcome, Rob. Let's start off with you introducing yourself and talking about your background a little bit. Sure. Uh, so again, I'm Rob White. I am the Chief Strategist at Sierra Energy. I'm also doing double duty as the executive director for the Sierra Energy Research Park, which is our new campus over in Davis, uh, just south of the university and south of 80. Um, my job at Sierra Energy is to do government relations, uh, outreach, as well as a little bit of business development. Um, but my background in government, local government specifically, uh, makes it uh, perfect for me to be able to be that person to reach out on regulatory issues, policy issues, etc. Uh, my background's probably pretty diverse, so I'll pack it in as fast as I can. I started out as a geologist doing environmental engineering uh, with a degree from Chico, uh, then found that land use was much more interesting, uh, so I wound up getting a planning degree from USC, um, and then I didn't think that was enough, so now I just finished my doctorate in policy, okay. ironically centered around innovation clusters. Huh. Uh, my work experience, uh, again, environmental engineering all the way through local government, uh, and, uh, and now in private sector again, uh, and uh, which I prefer. Um, but the real interesting part, I think, of all of this, the theme in all of that conversation has always been around innovative technologies and uh, all the way back to when I worked for uh, the company Tetratech, which was the environmental engineering company. I used to look at uh, and uh, evaluate remediation technologies at the scale that Sierra Energy is. So mm -hmm. I have a lot of background and interest in this area. So, for those who aren't familiar with Sierra Energy, um, can you describe what Sierra Energy does and the game-changing innovation technology that you guys have developed, the, uh, the Fast Ox gasifier? Sure. Uh, so, Sierra Energy is a wholly owned subsidiary of a uh, set of rail companies. Uh, that uh, primary uh, rail company is Sierra Northern. Uh, and that, uh, or excuse me, Sierra Railroad Company, of which Sierra Northern is one of those subsidiaries, as well as Mendocino Railway, which runs the skunk train. So we operate a number of short lines around the North State. Uh, but what makes it really interesting is because of that, we had a drive to figure out how to create better um, uh, fuel products for our locomotives so that we could uh, have cleaner running uh, uh, operations. Um, we started long ago in doing diesel electric, uh, back when other industries didn't think that was interesting. Um, did that conversion, got an EPA award for it, um, but then our founder, Mike Hart, uh, decided that he really wanted to go the next step, and that was to either fully electrify and or come up with a new fuel product, biodiesel being that goal. Uh, we uh, acquired Sierra Energy from a Big Bang competition at mm. UC Davis. Uh, it was one of the winners that year. Um, and then have been in the process of about almost 15 years of developing that technology. It's based in the blast furnace steel making industry, uh, so it's not super complicated on the front end. The real technology is how do you integrate all those systems together and how do you clean that gas so it's useful. Um, we're not looking in really at biodiesel as the real future for our, our locomotives anymore, and in fact we're now skipping ahead to hydrogen, yeah. which is probably a, uh, a future energy source more than anything, or future fuel source. Um, and we're looking to possibly do a demonstration with that right here at the Port of West Sacramento. Hmm. Uh, in the near future, we can talk more about that. But Sierra Energy's real goal is to uh, finalize the full-scale commercial demo that we're working on with the Army, the California Energy Commission, at Fort Hunter Liggett, which is in Monterey County. Process about 20 tons a day of on-facility waste. Um, that includes uh, municipal waste. Uh, after recycling, as well as uh, other materials such as brush, woody biomass, um, and demonstrate at that scale that you really can make electricity, make hydrogen, make fuel products, uh, get synthesis gas, um, and, and be able to take that technology and then take it to the next step, which is full commercialization. So it's really about turning garbage into energy. That's the bottom line. Yeah. How do you take what we're throwing into a hole uh, landfills and turn it into something more useful, a resource. Yeah. So this is a, an example of something that came out of UC Davis, uh, won the Big Bang Award, Correct. and then you're commercializing it. Yeah, so that's that's the real story there is. Here's a local uh, uh, winner of a, of a competition uh, that is now being turned into a full-fledged company, and we've invested uh, probably about $20 million of our own money over the last 15 years, and about $8 million worth of federal and state money. 
Um, so just under $30 million to take a technology over 15 years to this scale. But the, the real tieback is, is UC Davis. This mm -hmm. is a UC Davis-led uh, uh, effort right from the get-go. Yeah, cool. So you guys are in a commercialization, it's, it's more than proof of concept prototype yeah. at the fort, right? Um, what, what's the status of that and what's next after that? Sure, so maybe step one step back uh, to, to lead up to that. Uh, so we did a full-scale prototype uh, at a place called the Renewable Energy Testing Center. That facility no longer exists. Uh, it was run by the Department of Defense up at McClellan. Um, it shut down in 2013, right about the time that we had actually finished our demo and we can move on to the next scale, which is this. When we say full commercial scale demo, that means that it's still a demonstration project. Mm -hmm. We're still tuning and fine, uh, getting fine tuning and working through the, some of the efficiencies, but it is a working plant uh, and, and it could be commercialized as is. Although again, we'll take all the learnings from this mm -hmm. demonstration and move that forward. Um, the uh, process right now is we've been uh, either in the design phase or in active construction for a good part of maybe, maybe five or six years now. Mm -hmm. um, we've been in active construction now for uh, 12 months. Uh, and in fact, if you go to our website, sierraenergy.com, you can actually see the progress and a still uh, uh, set of stills as well as an active video on, uh, on the build out. Um, we're in what's called commissioning. So right now we do cold commissioning where each of the different subsystems and pieces of the equipment are being run through their paces and made sure that they're, uh, they all work together as they should. Uh, the software is being loaded, so we need to make sure that all that uh, integration mm -hmm. software works. We'll go into hot demo uh, or hot commissioning uh, probably sometime in August. Um, that's where we start to actively put in the waste, run it through the entire process, again, looking for efficiencies but also any, uh, any failures and, and issues. Um, and then we'll have a, a full runs, if that goes well, we'll have full runs starting in September. Oh, where, so uh, that'll be perfect coming. timing for the next Innovation Awards. Perfect timing. In fact, it'll be a great uh, story to be able to say, hey, last year, here's a winner, exactly. and look, now they've done the project. So well, that's a great segue. So Sierra Energy was a winner in the sustainability category at last year's Sacramento Region Innovation right. Awards. And you were honored alongside other finalists like ElectroScan and Blue One Energy. What's that experience been like for you and your team with this new program that Still Reeves has, has incorporated here? You know, I think it's fantastic and, and we're really thrilled, again, thankful to Still Reeves, but also the Sacramento Business Journal for really moving this project forward. Um, it's something that's been needed in the ecosystem for a while. Uh, innovation is happening around Sacramento and it's hard to know what all of those things are. I mean, Startup Sac's doing a good job of helping to get the word out, uh, some others. But, but really bluntly, there's a lot going on that people don't know about. This gives a chance for us to really see not only current technologies, but also up and coming technologies. Um, so we're, we're thankful to be one of the first inaugural winners. Uh, we're, we're thankful that Stoll Reeves and, and Moss Adams with the Business Journal have decided to, to make this a, uh, an annual occurrence, so you know, year two. Um, we're hopeful that we see a lot more uh, candidates come forward. I'm thrilled to be on the, uh, the judging panel this year, but, but bluntly, this is a great forum. Uh, it's an additive forum to what we need for our ecosystem for innovation. Yeah, so you mentioned you're going to be judging the sustainability category. How, any thoughts on that? Yeah, so there's a lot of interesting things happening out in the sustainability world right now. There's some you know, technologies that have been proven. There's some things that are new on the horizon. Um, and, and I won't speak to all of them because we'll see whether or not they uh, apply. Uh, but I think bluntly, uh, being the first year last year, we got a good number of candidates. This year, I, I won't be surprised if it triples wow. um, in that category mm -hmm. alone. Um, I, I think, you know, to talk about sustainability, many people think that sustainability is only about one thing, and that is, you know, how do we save a resource? Um, but it's, it's coupled together. You know, a lot of people talk about the triple helix, where you're really talking about triple bottom lines. Um, sustainability is about three big things. How do you save resources? How do you save money? Mm -hmm. And ultimately, how do you do social good? So I think people are going to see the sustainability category differently this year mm -hmm. than they did even in the past and think not just about resources, but how do I meet maybe all those metrics? So uh, you're also the former chief innovation officer uh, for the city of Davis. Correct. And you've talked a little bit about the innovation uh, here in Sacramento region. What are your thoughts on how that's evolved over the past few years? So let's talk about first and foremost thrilled that city of sacramento finally stepped forward and named a full-time chief, chief innovation officer. Officer, yes congratulations to lewis stewart we stole him from the state and that's a huge coup <laughs> for sacramento yeah. now he was already here in the in the uh, region but bluntly for having him be able to focus on sacramento specifically 
but the region in general will be uh, informative, but also uh, I think a crucial step forward. Um, I was the first chief innovation officer for Davis. They're on their second one now. Um, I was the third one in the state. Uh, I was like the 10th in the country. So when I came on board for Davis, it was something people didn't know what it was. And so we got a chance to help really define some of those things. Um, Chief Innovation Officer means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. um, in Davis, it meant moving forward innovation parks and research. Uh, it meant being coupled with the university. Also meant economic development is, and the outcomes from that. I think for Lewis, it's going to be even one step better, and that is, is how is the whole city of Sacramento a test bed, a living laboratory, mm -hmm. as you might think. Um, and, and, and the autonomous, autonomous vehicle uh, program that they're trying to move forward is a great example of that. Why shouldn't we be that right. place yeah. where these really roll out and, and interesting things are, are researched? Does the do the innovation officers of uh, Sacramento and Davis work together, coordinate at all? They do, absolutely. Um, and I think that's really true about the economic development folks across the region. Um, the good news is, is that innovation and economic development, a lot of those things go hand in hand again. Um, innovation, uh, the only difference there is you're really talking about new starts and entrepreneurialism. Uh, you're talking about small businesses that might have, be a little slightly different than those you might normally see. Um, but innovation in general is just how do you take ideas that exist and make them even better, marry two ideas together that don't exist. And that's why working across Davis and Sacramento, Sacramento, Roseville, Roseville and, and, mm -hmm. and Elk Grove is important. Um, it's why I think the SAC I Hub is so busy trying to be restarted. Um, bluntly, uh, it, it's a missing piece of the ecosystem and I'm thrilled that Brandon and IO Labs have moved forward on grabbing that mm -hmm. opportunity. Uh, it'll be interesting to see Lewis, who used to run the IUP program for the state, now involved in the IUP for Sacramento. Uh, hopefully we'll get all the trade secrets from that. <laughs> um, but, but I think bluntly, not working across the region um, does you no good. Um, Sacramento should be the leader, and we should have the strongest innovation ecosystem. But bluntly, everybody wins from that right. uh, by the linkages they get created. So you've talked a little bit about some of the, um, some of the good things that are happening here. Um, what are some of the things that we can do better as a region to improve innovation and entrepreneurship here? I, I think it's something I learned in Livermore, I started up the innovation cluster there uh, with the two national labs and we took a different tactic and that is come from a place of abundance, not from a place of scarcity. And you have to immediately believe that through innovation, you wind up solving those problems of scarcity. Um, and so there's plenty to work with. I think those of us that are engaged in innovation in the Sacramento area know that to be true already. We see plenty of opportunity. The biggest thing is how do you get the policymakers to also recognize that? How do you get the community to embrace that and not just see it as a cluster of these folks that are working off in the corner? Um, I think for us what's missing most is that feeling of general camaraderie. Mm. Um, back when the economy was just busted and people were trying to scramble around for any opportunity, there was a, a greater deal of collaboration. Mm. People dropped their guard and they were so desperate to really do something. Um, now there's a little more guardedness, but I think Sacramento is getting over that really fast. Um, we see, I think, our opportunity uh, for uh, how do we make the region uh, competitive um, is really that collaborative uh, spirit, really that opportunity to work across the regional boundaries. So I think that's one piece that's evolving quickly and I think it's what's what's been missing and it's what's coming. Um, a great example, uh, we're starting up an accelerator called Area 52 um, out in Davis as part of our research campus. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, linkage with not only what Mark Friedman's doing with the University of Research Park down the street with us in Davis, but also what Brandon's doing with now several places for IO Labs um, and the Urban Hive, what Hacker Lab's doing now with several locations, what Integro's doing, etc. I mean, there's probably a list I could go on for an hour. Uh, but the reality is that by linking all those pieces together and seeing them as part of the creative whole, um, then nobody has to make choices. When you get to a place where people are choosing where to go, they're getting limited resources, they're getting only one perspective. Um, if a company starts at Area 52 our, through our accelerator program and then decides to go host at IO Labs, great, or both. Uh, if they want to use the Hacker Lab uh, resources to do some of their build, great. Because that's the whole point of innovation, is how do you take uh, sparks of ideas, marry them up to other sparks of ideas, and you only get that through casual conversation, through collaboration, uh, through that uh, uh, unusual uh, attitude you get when people are colliding with each other around open creativity. So it sounds like a very optimistic uh, kind of perspective on how where things are going here. 
I'm hugely optimistic for Sacramento. I think, honestly, uh, we've searched for a while. I've been in the region since 91. We've searched for a while for what our identity is. Um, we, in the past, used to say we're two hours from everything, and that's not a great metric. <laughs> Um, instead, we should say everything's two hours from us. Um, I think the, the Golden One Center and the Kings have really helped change some of that perspective. I think what Barry uh, Broom's group with uh, Greater Sacramento is doing has helped with that and telling us the story. Why do we have a better uh, uh, environment, a better region from many metrics? Um, there are things that we're not going to be better than others at. We're not going to see the, num the amount of capital that comes out of Silicon right. Valley. But bluntly, as a mega region with them, we wind up being able to tap into those same resources. Not to the same degree, you're not gonna see money just walking down the street like you might if you go down to Sand Hill Road, but you most certainly see a lot more of it than we've ever seen before. And as people in general across the innovation spectrum globally are starting to look for new opportunity, Sacramento is a huge opportunity space because it isn't as tapped out as a Silicon Valley, as an Austin, as a Boston. Um, so for us, I think the future is super bright. I mean, I don't see anything but up from, from where my perspective is. We wouldn't be starting up Area 52 if we thought that, you know, it was going to be a struggle. Um, bluntly, I keep getting calls of, hey, are you open? <laughs> and I keep saying, we're in the midst of renovation. You know, we'll be open soon, but we got to get this done first. Um, so people are hungry for these type of opportunities in our region, but I think we're going to see it as an attractant from others as well. Great to hear. So lastly, uh, if you could give one piece of advice to emerging innovators, what would it be? One piece of advice. Um, don't get distracted. Uh, I think a lot of people, what happens is they get into a, what I call the shiny object mode. <laughs> um, and, and they're so busy trying to create, um, and then they see another opportunity come skating along that seems parallel, um, that they get off track. Uh, an innovator or, or anybody that's working in these, uh, these new tech areas, you got your biggest thing is staying disciplined, staying focused. Um, um, it's easy to start to jump tracks, and then you're so divided in your interest, you can't get what you were already working on done. Uh, bluntly, if you're a good innovator, there will be plenty of next opportunities. Finish what you're up to, either either finish or fail, whichever comes first. And fail is okay. Um, I think that's another thing that messaging people forget. You know, uh, you know, nine out of ten times you won't make it, um, and it won't work out. No problem. That's why it's what it is. Um, but as an entrepreneur or an innovator in general, um, just being focused, finishing, um, and then calling it good enough to move on to the next piece. Um, and I think that's maybe the last wrap up of that is um, don't be afraid to let it go too. Once somebody else comes along and can take it forward, typically the inventor, the founder, the uh, innovator isn't the right person to grow mm -hmm. it. Um, I think we forget that a lot. People as founders want to stick around a lot longer than they should. Um, get it to a place where it's easy for others to take on and then live that vision and then be okay with where it goes. Um, it probably doesn't look like what you started with. Mm -hmm. uh, I doubt Uber exactly looked like <laughs> what they thought it was when it started. And as a founder, quite frankly, he probably hung on too long. <laughs> um, but that's okay, you know, because uh, uh, it's going to move and it's going to have its own life. Uh, but many successful companies, as you look at them, their real success came after the inventor, the founder, uh, let it go into the next next step. And we need to do a lot more of that here so these companies can expand and grow. Awesome. So I want to thank you for your time. Any last Thanks. thoughts or shout outs to anybody? Uh, I, well, I'd say thank you to my, uh, to my executive, Mike Hart, because he obviously gave me this opportunity to be as invested as I am. He's seen the vision for not only having a research park, but also growing Sierra the way we are. Um, but I'd also like, again, to, uh, to thank Stoll Reeves, uh, Moss Adams, Sacramento Business Journal for last year's award. Um, and thank you for continuing to keep us involved. Um, this is an exciting time for Sacramento. This is an exciting award. Um, and I'm thrilled to see this happening on an annual basis. Awesome. So uh, just a reminder for people to uh, uh, applications are still being accepted for the Sacramento Region Innovation Awards. You can go to sacramentoinnovationawards.com to learn more and submit. And you can self-submit or submit others. So, again, thanks for your time and Thank looking you. forward to seeing what's next with Sierra Energy. Well, and if you want to keep track of what we're up to, sierraenergy.com is the easy way to get there. Awesome. Thank All you, right. Rob. Thank you again.